No one really called me Anthony or Schwartz. They all just called me Flash. So honestly, I did not expect it to grow this much because I made it like on the fly, like in eighth grade. That's one of the like a cool name for Instagram. And then when I got fast track, people started calling me like Flash and everything. So it just kind of stuck. It pretty much feels like part of me now. When I was coming in as a freshman, they said like he's the fastest recruit of 2018 and could possibly be the fastest college football player. Then I start going through like all my track times and stuff. And then you know you got those people here and there. They claim they're faster, they're not. Like we can go, we can go race right now. Like they're not. Yeah, um, his work speaks for itself. Um, like I said, whenever you run a 10 flat, that puts you in an elite uh, group of people, um, and he did that in high school, and so. We knew that we were getting the fastest player in college football when we signed him. That entire summer, he ran track. So he was not on campus at Auburn. He was not in the playbook at Auburn. And he basically showed up, I want to say three, maybe four weeks right before our first game. And he was able to pick up the offense, understand it inside and out. When he first started, everyone was telling me, well, um, you know, he's not going to be playing as a freshman. My son told me that. Well, you know, they don't play freshmen and all this. And then I think it was the second game, the first home game, Anthony scored that touchdown. And I texted my son, did you see Anthony's touchdown? And he's like, I'm still at work. What touchdown? People are texting me, blah, blah, blah. That shut him up. <laughs> um, when you got guys that have elite speed like that, you try to find different ways to get the ball in hand, whether that be on the perimeter, uh, jet sweeps, uh, reverses, um, shots down the field. His freshman year against Tennessee was when we like really found out how fast he was. Because fall camp, you know, some people might be too tired or, you know, he's just running by people. But like in the game, that's how you know, like someone's fast. When I took a post curl, 80, I think it was 80 yards or 78 yards to the crib. And that was just like two things that really stand out for me because I was like, those are receiver moments. Like they're not like speed sweep running around to the end zone. Those are like receiving moments where I was able to catch the ball do something with it and score. When I look back also my freshman year, I kind of like smile about it because like, even though like as a team, we didn't do as good as we thought we should have done, I felt like on an individual level, I did way better than I thought I was gonna do. Coach Miles on, he made sure to tell us that Anthony can do both football and track that was a big deal for Anthony. He wanted to make sure that he can do football and track, and he stuck to that word. He had the freshman record in the 60 meter for Auburn, and then he, he, he injured his hamstring, and I think that kind of messed up the rest of his track season. He never really got back to being his full, what he could fully do, his 100%. So I think it was frustrating towards the end because he was hoping to have a greater freshman season of track. It went all right. I wanted, I wanted to go a lot better than it did, but I can't complain because I was able to still get my times down, still be able to keep my speed up. I didn't feel like I was missing on anyone or it wasn't like disconnected. I just felt like, like time for a track. And then when I'm done with track, time for football again. So my sophomore season, it was a rough one. So the first two days, I thought it was like, because I transitioned from playing to the, the Z or the flanker receiver to the boundary receiver. That's where I started off at first, actually. Like, I was getting the hang of it. Like, I felt comfortable and everything. And then the third day, boom, break my hand out for the rest of fall camp. And so that's when I kind of started missing those reps with Bo. And so really that was kind of like tough, just like sitting on the sidelines, like not be able to do anything. He was looking forward to that, his sophomore year in football and to have the injury and to be out six, they were sure like six to eight weeks. He was just very down and just hurt about that. And so the first three games of the season, I was limited, I was in a cast and I had one catch, the thir third game against Kent State. Don't know how, I almost dropped it. I had to cradle it, but I did it. And then 
A&M game, which is the fourth game. That was the first game I had my cast off. I was visualizing that the whole week. I'm like, I'm gonna score on this play, just watch. Whitlow, in the round, here's Schwartz. The speedy Schwartz across the 50. Here goes Schwartz inside the 20, and it is touchdown, Tigers. He kind of went viral, and a couple of, I think Deion Sanders tweeted at him, and Des Bryant, which was huge for Anthony. So the Bama game, I was kind of, so the game plan was like to kind of get me rolling, like get me on um, like doing literally everything. And so the first play of the game, I had a hamstring injury, it was already hurting like before Georgia week. And then next thing you know, it just pretty much pops. Jackson was in the neighborhood to recover the fumble and Schwartz limps or hops off after one play. Wow. You lose your speed receiver on the first play of the game. Like I was just like on the sideline, like kind of like head down, everything, like trying to like getting ready, like trying to warm myself up, trying to do whatever I can to get back on the field. But I, I just couldn't, like I couldn't run, I couldn't cut, like I was just couldn't do anything. It was just injury after injury after injury, and it was just something that like I felt distraught about it because like in high school I never got injured. Like I felt like crap, honestly. Like it just felt like, damn, like what's going on with me? So it was a big conversation. Like people would always talk about, like, oh, are you gonna go to the Olympics? Oh, are you can go to the Olympics, this and that. I'm like, I mean, I'm I want to go to the Olympics. Like that's something I want to do. But right now it's about football. Like when I get to it, I'll get to it. But right now I just want to focus on football. So it kind of just got like a little tiring. I was running track for um, the month of February and then a half of March, and uh, like near the end of that week, that's when the um, the basketball games started getting canceled, the tournaments started getting canceled because of COVID-19. And so that's when we got a, a talk to my coach and then they all sent us a text saying that we'll be all online for the rest of the semester due to the pandemic. And so that pretty much that kind of like sealed it and then track season was officially canceled and that kind of sealed the fate of track for me. At the end of the day, he always had a love for, for track and field. I mean, that's really how um, he, he got his notoriety, right? So um, he's going to always have a passion. Anybody that's ever run the times that he's run and, and, and um, had the success that he had on the track is, is going to always have that little, little, little bit of love for track in, 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 in your heart. And so um, just like anybody else having to deal with the pandemic, um, it, it sparks change. change. And uh, sometimes you have to reassess and reevaluate your, your situation um, in order to maintain and to move, move forward, actually, in, in some cases. And I think he reached a point where he knew that he had to make, make decisions and make, and make changes. Who wouldn't want to go to the Olympics, but I think his love of football would have, would have just ate at him. The pandemic kind of sealed it, but I would say that it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I was able to focus more on football that, week, that year and then just being able to have my body recovered, I was like kind of a great thing for me too. When we came back, we came back in the summer, like in the summer, and by that time it was just all football, so I don't think he was talking about anything about track. I think his mind was just set on football. And he really bought in. He started getting extra work, um, really started buying into uh, developing his hands, um, his route running technique. Um, just overall helped him become a better football player, I think, by putting his mind at ease that, you know, track may not be the way to go. Even though I may be the fastest kid in America, I, I am a football player and I can make some money um, in football. And when it's, hey, when it's fourth and five and, and, and the game is on the line and they, they need number, number one and number five to some of you Auburn fans, <laughs> uh, he knows that when that ball is up in the air, he needs to go get it. For me personally, I felt like it was my best year, whether it was um, stat-wise, whether it was just like playing football, I felt like it was my best year. Going from a couple catches, maybe a game as, as, um, as a freshman, to having a ga games like that, you know, with 10 catches over 100 plus yards, yeah, I think it speaks for itself. And um, that, that doesn't happen 
um, overnight. It happens because someone has put in the work and the time. Kind of felt like that year of me transitioning from that gadget guy that can, that they put at receiver sometimes to being a true receiver. And I felt like the stuff that I was asked to do was like kind of similar to like stuff I was doing in the past, but like I felt comfortable like playing like every down, playing outside and inside, uh, moving around wherever I needed to be and running routes and everything like that. I just felt like I felt complete. Looking back at his Auburn career, I think it went really well for him. I'm, I think that was the right decision to go to Auburn. I don't think he regrets that. I think he's very happy that he played for Auburn and I'm, I'm proud of him. I loved every minute of Auburn. It was just, you know, I just liked the whole, I like I liked the town, I liked the school, the campus is beautiful, everyone there was really nice. Um, I loved the whole experience. I'll be really sorry to, you know, that won't be going back to Auburn. So what made me make my decision to enter the NFL draft and forego my senior year it was mainly because I, I just felt like I was ready. Uh, I played three years in the uh, SEC West, played against the best of the best DBs that you can go against. And I just always felt, I always felt good. The stuff that I did, even though I was limited to some stuff, I felt that was good. I felt like uh, I had a lot more, I have a lot more in me and that most of my best days are ahead. And I just felt like what I wanted to do, I couldn't really improve by staying another year. I feel like the best thing for me was to make this move to the next level. How much of, you know, Gus Malzahn's firing, you know, did that play a factor into it? I played a little bit of a factor, and so it kind of, I would say, like, it kind of made my decision a little bit easier, because I wouldn't, like, have connections, like, not that I wouldn't like connections, but I wouldn't have to, like, it wouldn't be as emotional as it would be if they were still there. But I still think I would have made this decision even if he, even if he didn't get fired. Yeah, I mean, he's worked really hard on just being a complete receiver. And, um, you know, I think he's had an outstanding year. And it's good to, to see that deep ball. You know, he's, he's a deep threat now. And then early in the game, you know, I know we tried to get it to him and they kind of double covered him with a safety on one. But just finding ways to match him up one on one. And then he is so deadly, you know, with the short game too and the perimeter game. And um, so, no, it's, it was good to see. So my relationship with Coach Malzahn was always a good relationship because he did keep his word. Like he allowed me to run track in the spring, which was a big thing for me. So I always appreciate him for that. Then he always like had my back. Like he always had, wanted to try and find ways to get me the ball. And so that kind of like led to me being more used as a gadget instead of like more like as a receiver. But I still appreciate everything he did for me. And then we still like talk like now, like he checks, he checks up, he's checked up on me. Um, twice since he since the firing and I feel like that like shows that like he really cared about me and I appreciate him for everything he's done for me. Obviously looking back on things, um, things that you felt like you could have done better, um, things you felt like you could improved on um, and, and you know as, as offensively I didn't call the plays um, so obviously in my mind um, with this speed there's always a bunch of different ways you can utilize a guy like Schwartz and uh, but at the end of the day I think that he had a good uh, good career. He had a, a thought or a vision where they would use him more. Obviously, Gus Melzon's offense doesn't cater to that. He, he's more of a run guy, you know, and, and, and takes shots when he needs to. And I, I think, you know, Ann understood that. But like I said, his 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 ceiling is very high, and, and teams going to realize that in the NFL. Because you don't want to waste something like that. Um, and I know he felt the same way. Just use him as much as he can. Um, special team wise, you know, offense, you know, wherever. So that's the biggest thing. Just we got to use someone that fast. So sometimes, you know, I sympathize with coaches sometimes because you go in with a game plan and, and you know, you know that you have these these few wrinkles. Um, I would have certainly liked for them to throw him the ball downfield. Uh, it was frustrating at times as, as even a spectator, knowing what they, they had. And so I sympathize with Auburn fans in terms of uh, feeling as if they didn't get the complete package in some instances. And they, they did a good job of, of using and implementing them into the offense, coming up with, with certain packages for him. But I just think he could have done much more. And he, he hasn't tapped his full potential yet, you know, as a, as a wide receiver. And, uh, you know, they're going to figure it out on the next level. 
Download the Milo's mobile app today and receive a free cheeseburger after your first purchase. That's one.